Hey gamers, it's Kusk, and I'm gonna, um, free talk, um, a, a birth chart reading for you dudes. Um, I have a few notes, but I always go off when I'm reading birth charts, so I guess that's how it's like. Anyways, this is a controversial figure, so with that being said, I do not want any hate going to him, his family, or his friends. I don't want any hate going to anyone. That is not what this video is for. This video is for entertainment purposes. Um, this might not even be his chart. Um, you know, for us, it would be maybe an insight on who he is and I guess why he fell into getting all these plastic surgeries. Um, if he's watching this, hopefully this might make him think a little bit about his actions. Um, that's basically it. Uh, obviously, uh, this is about Ollie London if you didn't see the title, and I do disagree with him. That is something I'll say right now. I do want to remain civil in this video. Do I think, uh, you know what, I, I think that he is not doing the right thing. But I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, this is more of a why he does the, th does the things he does, and, um, yeah, that's basically it. Hopefully this might, um make him thonk if he sees this, or make others thonk. Um, I don't know what others may gain out of it, but yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna write, going to get right into it now. Like I said, this might not be his birth chart. <laughs> um, I kind of just like ran the um, housing system around the wheel a little bit and just kind of tried to figure out what fit. Um, and I And I thought he was a younger ascendant sign. Even though he kind of has this fear of getting old, uh, I kind of, he does have a youthful energy, all right? Um, I do think that he um, has that youthful rising sign energy. And Gemini makes sense with that because I think Gemini and Gemini, Aries, Leo, I can see them having the most youthful, youthful sign energy. So they're like actually energetic no matter like how old they are so that being said you know i i saw that with ollie and i was like that makes sense especially since i do think he's also a leo um i see and i know some people are gonna say he was rich how why do you think he's a leo i see usually rich people have taurus i sees well i think that because i can see him being an aquarius midheaven more than a scorpio midheaven um so Leo I see doesn't necessarily mean someone's rich. Also Taurus I see doesn't either. It really depends on the other planets and um I think that he is a Leo I see even though he's rich because you know Aquarius midheaven. So but so Leo I sees they're morally categorized for feeling outcasted by their family because they seem to be living in a different world than them. This could be because of age difference. You know, there's not really people in that person's age range when they were a kid in their family, or their family is from a different place. Uh, and so when they meet up with their family, and you know, they come from very different parts of uh, parts of their lives or very different places, they might feel like the light is on them and they don't fit in. So that's like a Leo I see for you. Taurus, I see, is everything is stable, but there may be some uh, emotional emotional unfulfillment, but everything is taken care of. That is Taurus, I see. So when that comes into the midheaven and when they grow up and when they imagine what they want to be and how they try to make themselves look in the public, it's different. Pluto change is more slow burning. It's it's emotional. It's fear. It's, um, you know, tearing down things to build anew. And um, Uranus energy is tearing down things because you feel like it. there is not really much emotion in Uranus changes. Um, there sometimes is, but it's like fleeting emotion. It's like, I'm going to do this because I am angry in the second. And the next thing you know, you're like, huh, maybe that wasn't the best idea. That's Uranus emotional change. Pluto emotional change is like this deep thing that is like, this is not working. I have to move on. 
Scorpio midheavens are more intense also. They're more private than an Aquarius midheaven. Um, I don't know any, like, Scorpio midheaven examples. Um, I guess I want to say these are going to be such bad examples, and I'm not comparing these two at all because I think one of them is not as worse as the other. But um, I think Onision is a Scorpio Midheaven, and Tana Mojo is an Aquarius Midheaven. So, you know, Tana, like, she, she goes off on Twitter, all right? She, she do, all right? But you, you can just see that it's just her being young and her learning and her just, you know, being unfiltered. While Onision is, you know, he seems pretty manipulative, like he makes manipulative moves to get people to talk about him. And, um, sometimes those moves don't work. I don't know what he was trying to plan with, um, his thirst, uh, threads. Um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't know what he was trying to do. But I think, like, he, like, deep down, like, had pla intricate plans to get people to give him money, basically. Tana Mojo just kind of, you know, said, I got effed with a, f with a toothbrush and, um, went with that, and whatever happened was whatever happened. Sometimes it was for the worst, sometimes it was for the better. It just, gen you know, Tana genuinely seems like someone who isn't really conniving, while Onision does. Um, but I am trying to think of, like, a better Scorpio Midheaven example. The other one I'm thinking is, is Megan Fox. Um, but obviously that's not in the controversial range. She seems pretty light uh, from what I've seen. Basically, you know, she just seems very private and she seems like she goes into the spotlight and leaves the spotlight. That's kind of how I see her Scorpio Midheaven. It's just kind of, it's kind of like there sometimes. It's kind of not, you know, when she, when she's here, she's here and she's like, yo, what's up? Um, but when she's not here, she's not here. I think she, um, I guess, you know, I guess water is very private. You know, it hides when it wants to hide. And that's kind of Megan Fox's, you know, sometimes she's in the public, sometimes she isn't. It's just, um, I don't know. Oh, uh, that's like, I guess, a more un unproblematic Scorpio Midheaven, because not all Scorpio Midheavens are as problematic as, as Onion Boy. Anyways, um, so Aquarius Midheaven, I think that his tactics fall more as his, I mean, all these tactics, tactics fall more into the Aquarius Midheaven trope, where he's just kind of doing things because of impulse, and we see that, and he's famous for those impulsive things, um, I don't think his Venus is in the 10th, not because my Venus is in the 10th. Like, this chart is, like, a carbon copy of my birth chart. So, um, I, I really can't say, you know, that, um, I don't want one of his placements because I have most of them already. And I think that's why I find it weird that he's doing this when we have a very similar charts. But, um, I think his Venus is in the 9th because, um, I think he has a love for things that are different. I think he has a love for travel. Um, I do see that. And that he, like, you know, he wants to, um, he, he takes interest in things that are outside the box to him. That's kind of what I think, um, more than he takes interest in appearing, um, I guess solid. Because Venus in the 10th is, you know, wanting to appear like you have it together. And that you are an okay person. And working at that. Venus in the ninth is more fun-loving. Um, you know, that Venus energy. Even though it's in cat, No, it's in Aquarius for him. <laughs> um, e even though, like, you know, Venus and Sag and Venus in the ninth are different. But that Venus love is going into travel and learning and philosophy and just deeper things. So I think that is more him than, you know, trying to look presentable. I, I really do. Because if a, if a Venus in the 10th gets called out as badly as Ollie is, I think they would stop and not try to get more surgery. It's just my take on it, though. 
or lash completely like lash out and say just don't just say stop making videos about me well unless if like he's getting hate then i understand him doing that as venus in the 10th but um usually venus in the 10th try to look um decent in the public eye i don't i think ollie's trying to you know pull leo moves when it comes to the public eye um you know, like, his Leo I see is like, I'm different, and I'm gonna show the world. And Aquarius Moon Heaven's like, what are you doing? That's what I mainly see. So, I think his Venus is more in the ninth and conjunct the 10th. And that means um, that it is his elevated planet, and that life uh, goes well because he grew up with money. Um, you know, there's not much being sh shaken around when it comes to his general life. Um, I do think that people may have betrayed him before, though, with his, uh, chart ruler. I'll get into that later, though. Uh, but, you know, you know, Venus is, you know, very pleasant, very slow-moving, and it's fair. You know, justice is on his side for the most part when he's going through life. Uh, when it comes to his chart ruler, you know, that's Mercury. Um, he has so much Mercury energy because his sun and moon are also in the Mercury deacon, along with his ascendant, which is also in a Mercury sign. Uh, with that being said, you know, Mercury in the 8th and retrograde, he is a deep thinker and he probably um, has self-esteem issues. I'm going to say that right now. He probably does not see himself as a smart person or definitely didn't when he was younger. Uh, and also, um, uh, Mercury is conjunct Neptune exactly, so he may not really grasp what he thinks sometimes, and he may kind of, like, intuitively pick up on subjects, like, he can look at a book and sleep under the book and then understand what is in the book, um, so to say. Uh, especially with Mercury retrograde, like, he's, he's gonna, he needs some time when learning subjects and he has to really internalize what he's learning especially with Capricorn Capricorn wants to master uh Capricorn isn't like the best Mercury sign but it's not Pisces Mercury it's it, I don't know it, it's a weird Mercury sign I'm not gonna lie I have a Capricorn Mercury and I'll admit it's weird um, but, but mine is in the Saturn Deacon his is in the Venus Deacon so his chart ruler um, maybe more focused on, you know, his, you know, Venus, um, interests and learning about them. And, you know, that learning process, he wants to master, uh, what he can learn about those things, you know, so this can be in the realm of philosophy and travel, especially, you know, other cultures, um, that is highlighted definitely in what we see in the public, um, you know, you can see him, like, trying to learn about that and try to internalize everything. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, and then, you know, Uranus is also there shaking things up in the 8th. Uh, and it's also conjunct his Mercury, but but it's at 6 degrees. There's a 6 degree um, conjunction rather than an exact conjunction. So that also means that, um, you know, his... Um, thought processes might be different like something may work for him when learning something at first but sometimes that thing doesn't work with another subject uh so you know maybe writing things down may work for you know learning this but it won't look work for learning that uh also he i i think this also since this is chart ruler <laughs> oh i have mercury and uranus near my chart ruler too so I kind of understand this, actually. I understand what clicked in my brain just now. Um, he may kind of have um, very shaky self-esteem. Um, so that is also highlighted with Chiron, but we can talk about that later, right? Um, so, you know, Mercury with um, Neptune Uranus, you know, his thought processes might be all over the place, but also um, his self-esteem might be. Uh, he may think highly of himself since this is, this is his chart ruler. And this is kind of a part of his um, ascendant in a sense. Um, he may think that uh, he's, you know, okay, he's pretty great. 
And he uh, also may think he's not so great. I think that also plays into the overthinking and his Chiron placement. Also, since I said he had, he may have had some issues with other people, um, it, all of this is in his eighth house, so this is shared finances, so I think he might have to watch out for roommates, or had to watch out for roommates, or people who are sharing responsibility or money. Um, I think, you know, with Neptune there, people may have different, um, what's it? different intentions um and he might not see that right away also uranus things might pop up out of the blue and that could be people's intentions being not what he thought they were um people may have tried to um get him to pay more rent because he was born in a pretty wealthy household i can see that definitely um i don't know why that popped up when i was like looking at his chart but it did um, but yeah, Uranus and Nep Neptune also, you know, point to, like, shaky self-esteem, because that is you. That is near there. That is your planet. That is where most of, um, your energy is from, is that planet. That is, you know, your chart ruler. You know, your chart ruler and your elevated planet, that is what's going to mostly dictate you and your life when it comes to astrology. So, things might be shaky with himself he might see himself as great one day awful the next i think that does play with a lot of surgeries too and we can move on to chiron and jupiter now jupiter is also in retrograde and it is opposing all of this so it's blowing up um i guess you know the second house stuff um people may see that and try to take advantage and um you know latch and latch into the eighth house and say yo i want this and it may cause Ollie to kind of be a little stingy, um, in a sense. Not in a sense that he won't help people, but in a sense that, um, he might not want people getting near his eighth house. Eighth house is also intimacy. So he may not want people getting close to him because, um, people try to get into his eighth house to get him to pay rent or something. That, that's just what I see. Um, I'm also American, so, um, you know, from the U.S., uh, so I, I kind of think in those terms, too. So, anyways, let's get right back into the news, so to say. Chiron is also opposing all this. So, this is in the second house. Second house is your money and your self-esteem, all right? Um, so, with that being said, Chiron is also the wounded warrior and that is in the house of you know self-esteem what you find comfortable your own money um you know chiron's the wounded warrior you know it's stuff that you um have gone through and keep going through and you and, you know it's a bunch of knives in your back you can give good advice to people on wherever your chiron is but you're not going to fully learn from it um, you know, you're, you can handle your Chiron, but it's something that is going to be a kind of a lifelong struggle for you. So with Jupiter, you know, his, his Chiron is, you know, it, it's blown up a bit. It's a very loose conjunction, but it is, it is something. Uh, and also since this Jupiter in retrograde is, um, opposing all of his stuff near his chart ruler and his chart ruler i think that um you know his like self-esteem issues may be really affecting him along with just neptune and uranus um fogging up things you know neptune being fog and uranus throwing things into that fog and jupiter in retrograde that means this is um the it's more of an internal thing even though we do know he grew up in a rich household, and also his Jupiter's in Cancer. Damn, that's a really good place for Jupiter. Um, that is, uh, you know, the exaltion for Jupiter. So that's the best, the, the third best sign for Jupiter to be in, in someone's chart. So with that being said, you know, even though a second house is blown up and he did grow up pretty wealthy, um, this is more concerning uh, his internal uh, you know, 
how he sees his own self-esteem. And, um, yeah, it's kind of what I've seen more with Jupiter. Um, I don't think he's, like, going to be, like, a Kardashian with money. I think that, um, he, um, may have some riches still, and he may get help, but, um, from his family, I do think that he definitely, uh, will, um, you know, or is making his own money, though, and has been taught to make his own money. And, you know, Ju so mainly this Jupiter in retrograde stuff, you know, all of this energy of self-esteem, you know, so it is more of a self-esteem thing for a second house because of also Chiron. Um, cancer, that is also a water sign. It is, it is the first water sign too. It is the baby out of the water signs. Um, it is very protective and it is, um, very, let's see. And it's also defensive. It's a stubborn sign like Taurus, but it goes more with the flow than Taurus. So, um, yeah, he might be clinging on to things. Also, Cancer's family, it represents, um, the IC usually and, um, motherly love, quote unquote. You know, it's more nurturing while Capricorn is more discipl disciplinary, fatherly, quote unquote. So, um, yeah, Capricorn's more, you should do this well. Um, Cancer's like, oh, you're feeling something. I will try to help you through this. Um, so with that being said, uh, Cap so with that being said, you know, this is more of an internal thing when it comes to reading his Jupiter. You know, he does have wealth, but this is really signifying he feels like he can't really, um, open up about his self-esteem issues and the, that kind of wreaks havoc in his inner world because of that opposition between his chart ruler, especially. It's just, wow. Anyways, uh, his moon's in Virgo. So with me saying all this, like, overthinking energy, um... Moon in Virgo is definitely that, especially if it's in the Mercury Deacon. Um, you know, not to make a pun here, but Virgo's the perfection sign. <laughs> I can't, but um, yeah, he might really strive to be perfect. And I think that's why he may see perfection as like this deeper song in a sense. And that, you know, that he like wanted to put that out <clears throat> because that is where his emotions are. Um, Mutable moons are very perceptive, so he probably does really want to be perfect, especially with the second house and his eighth house. Um, those are very highlighted, and they have oppositions between each other with the planets that are there and the asteroids that are there. <clears throat> so he may feel very anxious, and he might be very percep perceptive, saying, okay, um, you know, I... I want to be perfect. And also this fits in with the Leo I see um, that he felt like he stuck out. I think, you know, his Aquarius Midheaven is like he wants to stick in and he wants to be seen as, um, you know, someone who um, fits in in a sense and that is perfect and that, you know, has people. And I think he kind of found this in Jimin if we want to really tie things up. I just really, just talking about this, I, I kind of, that just kind of threaded into my mind that he definitely sees himself, he, like he wants to be Jimin because he finds him perfect. And that definitely fits in with this image. Um, and, you know, sometimes like Leo, I see, you, you know, sometimes it's the I'm so different, so I'm going to express it up here, but I realized um, that, you know, in the Aquarius Midheaven world, people are kind of like me, but also it can mean that I don't want to stick out anymore, so I want to be like everyone else. Um, I think you can see both of those in um, the Leo I see Aqua Midheaven people. Uh, I think you can definitely see both in every single one of them, but... Yeah, I just find that wild. Um, all right, let, let's get right into the birth chart. Also, I think his ascendant exactly squares his moon, which makes it hard for him to really open up about things. And I think maybe that's why he's turned to um, wanting to be someone else. Um, 
So yeah, it, it, he finds it hard to express um, emotions to others. And but he he understands his emotions. He understands what his Virgo moon is all about because it is trying his chart ruler and everything in his eighth house. So he's like, I understand what's going on here, but I kind of um, I'm kind of like afraid to try to attempt to express things through my ascendant talking to people and expressing emotions on a surface level so I'm not the moon's also in the fifth house this could mean uh, a love for art because emotions are being tied to creativity and emotions like the Virgo moon emotions are you know being expressed through creative means and um or, um, but, you know, creative means doesn't mean, like, the person has to create if the moon's, if their moon's in the fifth, but it means that, um, they want to, um, they, they find, uh, I guess, comfort in art. They find comfort in it. Now let's move on to his, um, where his son is. <laughs> this is gonna be fun to read. So... His son's in the ninth, along with his conjunct his Venus, uh, and also his Saturn is there. His part of fortune's there too. Uh, if you don't know, right now while I'm recording this, Saturn is in fourteen degrees Capricorn. Um, that means his um, his Saturn return's coming soon. It's somewhat happening right now, but it is not in full effect at the moment. So, and also this is near karma. Damn. Karma's next to his son, which is his ego. So, in this life, you know, he he definitely has to learn how to love himself. But he seems to have some issues with that. Um, but hey, it happens. Um, I think this life is kind of about self-love and putting yourself out there because his, um, North Node's in the 10th. And, oh, his North Node ruler is in the 8th right next to his chart ruler. Oh, that's interesting. Um, so yeah, he really has to get in touch with 8th house themes. Um, 8th house is not just other people's finances and intimacy. He does have to open up to people and, you know, um, understand who is, um, going to you know come after him and who isn't you know he has to kind of uh you know get the strainer and um strain everything and see who's who's the real ones and who isn't but I can also see this being you know fear especially you know when it comes to the moon you know the eighth house is also fear it's known fear uh that may be hard to really detect with Neptune there but he has to um, face things and be able to be like, yo, public, this is, this is the, this is Ollie London, fam. Also, he probably can, you know, channel 8th house energy to maybe create art. I can see that also with this. And Pluto also squares his north node by a degree. Okay. That's interesting. Uh, so yeah, it's very much getting in touch with his eighth house and being able to incorporate that knowledge into his public life and not be so afraid of keeping it all private. Um, and with that being said, Saturn return. His Saturn return is almost here. It is in his ninth. Um, it's kind of ironic that he chose to try to be someone else and when his Saturn return is going through his ninth house. Maybe this is his calling. I don't know. I'm not an expert. I'm just, I'm just, um, someone who likes to look into this for right now. So when really looking at this, his Saturn returns going through his ninth. Um, when it comes to, um, you know, to the Saturn and Pluto conjunction that's gonna be on his karma so I think um yeah he should be um kind of uh he should look out when he's traveling
because I can definitely see, you know, issues portraying to that maybe. Or, um, or he's going to explode fa- fame wise. That's what I mean by explode. He's going to explode fame wise. And he might be famous in a Tana Mojo way, but, um, yeah, this is wow. So I think a Saturn return can mean a few things. Um, he might realize that, uh, you know, in a few months that, um, you know, he's happier with himself or that all that he has done has not made him happy in sort of his north node. Um, Saturn returns are more of like the tools to help us figure out our north node. Like when we have our nodal return when we're 18 or like around 17 and 19, we kind of, we understand our north node. We understand kind of what to do with it with an extent. We have like an idea. But when our Saturn return happens, that's when we really get to work on our north node and our north node purpose. So to say when it comes to astrology, we we get to um, work on uh, getting out of that um, south node thing and start working on our north node, balancing the two out. With all we have in the south node and the fourth, this may make him be so used to being private with things. And, um, you know, with Aquarius midheaven, um, with us being like Leo Aquarius and just like this being in the Aquarius, you know, his um, north node being there. He may get, like, bad ideas. You know, I think he kind of understands this, that he has to connect to his eighth house, but I think he didn't do it in a way that really satisfies his north node. Um, I don't think becoming a different person necessarily will bring him long-term happiness and make him face things. Um, I think it just is a distraction, um, and may kind of feed into the private life because he's not really, um, he's not really, you know, expressing himself. He's just kind of trying to be this perfect person that I don't think he fully can be because that's not himself. Um, and so it's really trying to bring whatever is in the eighth and the fifth, you know, is moon out there and also the second you know it's it's trying to figure out like all of this out okay the aspects between the second the fifth and the eighth trying to bring all that out and um you know that's kind of where I think his north node lands is you know really um unlocking his potential that's in the eighth Uh, and again eighth is not just about other people's money, it can be about people, people's fears and um, where you feel insecure, you know, known fears and insecurities. So his North Node, I think, really portray like, you know, connects to unlocking those things. And I think once his Saturn return hits, um, he, he may, uh, I don't know if he'll regret anything. I, I don't. That, that's not my place to say. I'm not really a uh, fortune teller. That's not what this is about. I think he's going to learn more how to unlock his eighth because I don't think he did. Um, also, Jupiter. Jupiter is definitely in his eighth house right now. Um, let me look uh, just for a moment uh, where Jupiter is right now. Jupiter at the moment is in 19 degrees Sagittarius, so... Oh, that's on his Mars. It's, it's it's in the seventh house. So we may be... He's very, you know, concerned with others at the moment. Um, You know, we might be overwhelmed by others. He's concerned about others' lives, and um, he's taking action with that because it's on his Mars. So with Jupiter on his Mars right now, I think that's what really pushed him to go to Korea, maybe? Um, obviously this was a few months ago, so, um, Jupiter might have been in, like, 10, 14 degrees Sagittarius, but still, you know, close to his Mars. But yeah, um, his Saturn return, um, I think he's gonna really understand himself on a deeper level. That's what I really see. 
and I think he's gonna learn how to appreciate um ninth house the ninth house world more you know philosophies travel all that sort of stuff learning things that are more um open-ended rather than concrete um by concrete I mean um that there's a given answer that's what Gemini learning is it's like given answer learning while Sagittarius is more open answer learning topics that involve you know, not exact answers like, I guess, artistic interpretation and philosophy. So I think he may appreciate Ninth House stuff more. And um, <laughs> I think uh, he he may, um, may uh, I guess, I don't know. I, I don't exactly know. I think he may, um, I, don't, I, I can't say anything else. Um, I just can say that he set himself and set himself in a weird place for a Saturn return. That's all I can say. I don't know what's exactly going to happen. I just know that next year, Ollie, you're you're going to have a year. All right, you're you're going to definitely have a year of learning. That's all I have to say. Um, did you do the right thing? I can't say. I think you'll figure that out in a few months. And um, you know, I guess. Maybe even a few years. You know, when it, whenever Saturn leaves Capricorn, you you might get the full picture then. All right, I I don't I don't exactly know. Um, I just I just don't I don't think that this was uh, this is something that um is serving you. Doing all of getting basically addicted to plastic surgery. I don't I don't think this is what um is going to serve your purpose, but it might. Um, again, I don't know. Um, this is just, I think the only advice I have to say is try to look deep. That, that's really all I have to say. Just try to look into that eighth house and, um, try to sort yourself out and try to be yourself before being a celebrity. Um, I did watch the Barcroft documentaries. This is not like the Kim Gard Kardashian dude who's like, I want to be myself. I just, I just think I'd look good with some Kim Kardashian features. I don't get that vibe. All right. I don't. That's why I kind of wanted to look a little bit into it. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Kind of a little shook, shooketh. <laughs> I don't, I don't know the exact term. That's very old slang. But, yeah, I don't know what to exactly make of a Saturn return at all. That, that's all I have to say. I, I really don't. Um, and I'm sorry that I'm not an experienced astrologer that can really look into that. But, um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, peace out. Have a lovely day. Again, don't send any heat. This is just more of a... How, how does this person's birth chart look like? I don't know. It looks like something, probably, and that's just kind of how I kind of wanted to look at it, and yeah, hope you guys have a nice day, see you later, um, bye. <laughs>